Brian, and thanks so much for opening your garden gates for us. And right now we're going to be talking about great color in the garden, courtesy of foliage. I'm joined by Karen Chapman, who's an author uh, from Seattle by way of Great Britain. Welcome right. to the program. Thank you so much. Lovely to be here. It's a great topic to, to be talking about. Tell me real briefly how you, you've organized your book on, on this topic. So our latest book, Gardening with Foliage First, is organized into seasons. So there's, um, it's actually color-coded on the edges of the pages, and everything that's green are the spring and summer combinations, and everything which has the orange is the fall and winter. But we took it a step further because we also have a dark and a light shade, which helps you find combinations for the shade or for the sunshine. There are any number of different combinations that are possible with foliage and Absolutely. typically you've you've created you show or highlight a bunch of different really colorful combinations uh, and these are mostly foliage but frequently punctuated by things like uh, flowers and berries too right well the way the garden um, book was put together was to help people understand how to put together a foliage framework what well, Christina and I had seen were co-author on both these books. We had seen our clients and frustrated homeowners go to the nurseries looking for color, but they would home in on the flowers. Sure. And so they'd go home with a little dianthus and a pansy and a primrose and put them together and they'd be great for a week or two. And they hadn't looked at the leaves, so all they were left with was this muddle of mid-sized, mid-green leaves, not very attractive. Mm -hmm. So we knew they could do better than that. So both our books help people find um, the color in a plant leaf, find what's special about it, and then we explain how to introduce partner combinations to really fill out a design, and then layer in the flower or a piece of artwork, even mm -hmm. colorful berries. Cool. So what makes for a good partner to foliage? A good partner. I like to teach design um, by breaking it down into three simple steps, and mm -hmm. I just call that spotlight, highlight, and limelight. Mm -hmm. And for the spotlight, I ask you to imagine going into the nursery with me, but this time not looking at all the pansies, <laughs> looking across at the foliage, right. and finding something like a twist of lime abelia. Mm -hmm. And that's got the most delicious looking leaf. It's a variegated leaf. You'll see some leaves are green and yellow. Right. Other leaves are green and white. But it's more than that. It has white flowers and there are actually dark burgundy stems. Now here's what I want to do. I see that dark burgundy and I want to find a way to highlight it. Oh, I see. So Excellent. then I look for a dark purple leaf. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest something like one of the many Laura Petalums that you mm -hmm. have here or Nandina Flirt could work. You bring that in to highlight it. Now the fun part is where you do the final step. That's the limelight and I call that party time. Okay. <laughs> because when it's party time, that's when you can throw in a wild card. You could throw in a pop of magenta, maybe from a dianthus flower, mm -hmm. um, or you could introduce bright orange. You could put an orange pumpkin in with that combination. Sure. Um, or you could just continue to um, evolve the monochromatic scheme that you've already started with. Mm -hmm. But those three simple steps, doing that with foliage and then incorporating the flowers mm -hmm. into that means you'll have a much more colorful garden. So highlight, limelight, and spotlight. That's right, right. Spotlight okay. first, then highlight what you found that's gorgeous, and okay. then the limelight party time. Okay, I like <laughs> that. I like that. It's a simple framework, really. It and, is. And, and in the book, you, speaking of parties, there's a lot of party <laughs> in the book. And, and, uh, Christina and I had a lot of fun putting these books <laughs> together. I think we also had a lot of chocolate. Um, mm -hmm. We seem to be constantly hungry. We, we gave titles to our combinations, and there's rather a lot of them are associated with food or drink. Yeah, um, nice. I'm not too sure what that says about <laughs> us. <laughs> there's one called Savvy Solution. Yes, that was uh, photographed in a Washington garden, but would be equally at home here. There's the most beautiful color guard yucca, gorgeous color to that. And then next to it, a big mullein. So you've got this big, soft, velvety kind of leaf. And then thrown into that as contrast is the flower of a sea holly, the Eryngium um, sapphire blue, one of Such my amazing. absolute favorites. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you've got the combination of textures. You've got the bold but spiky texture of the yucca. Mm -hmm. You've got the much larger felted soft leaf of the mullein. And then you've got the spiky bracts of right. the eryngium. I mean, just three plants, and it's fabulous. Yeah. I wish I could say it was my design. It wasn't. Well, <laughs> gorgeous 
color combinations, but yes. also you reference texture, and I think that's mm -hmm. so important. Yes. And you can even have a monochromatic or close to monochromatic Very green uh, garden, yes. but if you have great variety of texture, then that could be extremely pleasing. Absolutely. So you're looking for contrasting big leaves, such as a Japanese aralia, mm -hmm. with very fine textures, maybe some of the grasses or lamandra or some of the fine ferns. The other thing about texture, which um, gardeners often forget, is it's also about how a plant feels. It's not mm. just about the surface area, it's that tactile quality. Exactly. So we were talking about the spikiness of the mm -hmm. sea holly versus mm -hmm. that soft velvety mullein or lamb's ears. Right. That's another part of texture we can play with and there's so much we can choose sure. from. Sure, and you know, uh, so many people are tempted to go out and actually touch plants. Yes, that's and right. Not just for fragrance like rosemary or something yeah. like that, just but just, just for the tactile touch. pleasure. Absolutely. You know? Lamb's ears is a classic, yeah, yeah, isn't that right. beautiful silvery leaf that's got a nap to it. You just, you just want to stroke mm -hmm. it. <laughs> right. Well, one you may not want to touch is be happy. Oh, right. Because <laughs> there, be there may be some visitors in there. I know. That was a fun combination. That was um, an island combination um, up in Washington again would be totally at home here but there were so many bees on that combination there was a big sweep of jamanda with little pink flowers mm -hmm. and they were all over that sure but it's interesting because jamanda has a very fine texture right. and it was with some rosemary which also has a fine texture mm, but a different kind of fine texture. different kind of fine right. texture but what made it work was that in with this there was a eucomis or a pineapple lily mm -hmm. so you have that bold succulent burgundy leaf mm -hmm. even Right. when it's not in blooming, Sounds that'd correct. be a bonus. Oh my gosh, it was incredible. And mm -hmm. again, just three simple plants mm -hmm. that really made a statement. Right. Now, do you caution people to be careful about what kind of plants they put together? Because they may have striking combinations mm -hmm. of foliage, but they may require different kinds of cultivation techniques. Right. And we're very careful in the book. There's a mm. plant profile of every plant which is mentioned okay. that Great. tells folks um, what they need. But also, it does help that at least we've separated into sun or shade. Although mm -hmm. your sun here in Texas is pretty different from the <laughs> Seattle sun. I accept that. I would think so, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so we do give all the help we can with okay. that. Okay, all right. Well, I want to keep marching through some of these wonderful varieties. <laughs> Twist and Shout. Does oh, you, yes. You did have a party Twist now, and didn't shout. you? <laughs> I know. Well, Christina and I are fun lovers. What can I tell you? It's You're a right. shame she couldn't be with me today. Mm -hmm. Twist and Shout was such a fun one. Again, actually, it has the, the uh, color guard yucca but used mm -hmm. very differently this time there are three of them emerging from this bed of ground covers which I'll tell you about but what's fun is that there is this um, twisted or spiral obelisk in a bright limey yellow color mm -hmm. and going through that is the annual black-eyed Susan okay so what's happening there's a connection going on between the color and the stripiness of this sure. yucca and the vertical flowering spike with the obelisk and the shape of that. Mm -hmm. It's an incredible correlation. It sounds like a really bright eye Really form. fun. And then at the base, they've got Verbena Homestead Purple and mm. some orange sedges. Um, very, very well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very inspiring. It, it sounds terrific. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, so, some of my favorite plants in that group. One also, Summer Crunch. This was one of the edibles one. There were um, a number of different things in there. There was some kale. Um, I think there was some Swiss Shard in there, so it was a great color connection between the foliage and the stems mm -hmm. of Swiss Shard, of course, can be magenta, white, or yellow. So there we're taking where it's not just even the leaf, it's the stem color becomes a part of the combination. Mm -hmm. And then tucked into that were those little portulaca, um, the bright succulents which open in the sunshine that added again, I think it was a pop of magenta. Mm -hmm. So simple. That was actually a street side planting. I, I was in the middle of the road on my hands and knees taking photographs of that, <laughs> much to the Careful. amusement of the cars going past, but that mm. was just a street side planting. Right. Cool. It's great. But we have to mention a, a combination that'd be great for autumn or winter. Okay. Um, I was thinking about swimming with succulents. Oh, that was a special one. That was really quite remarkable. There are a number of different succulents in that design, but I would say the showcase is Aeonium Schwarzkopf, that one that's called Black Rose, mm -hmm. and it's really glossy, so you have that light reflective quality. So that's showcased against aloes and some others, a few Forbia fire sticks. 
sensational. You'll love it. All right. Well, Karen Chapman, thank you so much for being here. The book is titled uh, Gardening with Foliage First. Right. And I hope that people will remember that because there's so many just delicious uh, foliage <laughs> plants out there, right? Absolutely, yes. All, all right. right. Well, thanks for being on Central Texas Gardener. Thank you so much. Okay. And coming up next, it's Daphne. Mm -hmm.